My name is Carly Garner. I am a commodity futures and options broker at Carly Trading. If you're on social media and you're interested in learning more about futures and options trading, we post a lot of charts and commentary and educational event information and that sort of thing on our uh, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram accounts. So check us out there. Just so you know uh, a little bit of background, I do provide content to Jim Cramer's Mad Bunny um, relating to commodities. Roughly about once a month, he features our analysis on the show. I also write a, a column for Stocks and Commodities Magazine, and I write a couple of newsletters for our brokerage clients. We are a brokerage service again. Um, that's how we make our living. I've written a couple of books, so if you run into anything that you like today or you just like uh, want to learn more, you might be interested in higher probability commodity trading or a trader's first book on commodities. Basically, the, the first book, a trader's first book on commodities, is everything that you need to know before you start trading. And then the other book, Higher Probability Commodity Trading, is everything you need to know to actually place your first trade before you actually put your first trade on. Um, so anyway, also I want to remind everyone that there is a substantial risk of loss in trading futures and options. We aren't investing, we're not earning dividends or interest. We are trading, we're trying to beat the markets. It's not always easy. So first let's let's talk about day trading. Should you, should you not? Is it for you? It's not for everybody. Uh, but the allure of day trading is that traders are often drawn to the idea of low barriers to entry, low margin. If you've ever traded futures before, you've had brokerage services throw day trading margins in your face. You can trade the E-mini S&P for margins as low as three to 500 bucks. I would never uh, recommend utilizing that kind of leverage, but unfortunately brokers do push that sort of thing. We actually do offer $500 day trading margins on things like the E-mini S&P or the mini Dow. Again, don't recommend it, but some, some traders like to go uh, full board. Anyway, it, it's a lot of leverage and it's a lot of risk. I'm gonna show you today how to maybe trade the E-mini S&Ps with a lot less risk and a lot less leverage. Uh, traders also, or day traders also like the idea of not having overnight risk. They can sleep at night. Just as we mentioned, the S&P futures gapped 30 points lower on the reopen. While somebody that had positions open might have felt pretty good about a bullish position on the close in the U-mini S&P and an hour later when the market reopened, it doesn't look so great. So a day trader is in and out in the same trading session. They're out before the close. They don't have the risk of a gap open or close in the evening or you know, even uh, in the overnight markets, they can sleep at night knowing that whatever they wake up to in the morning, they don't have any risk on the table. And also day trading is exciting. It speeds everything up. You're using the same technical indicators that you would use to trade, uh, you know, a position trade in whatever market you choose, but you're doing it in a in a quicker time frame. So if you're if your system makes money, whether it makes money on a daily chart or a weekly chart, if you apply that to a day trading chart, it's probably going to make or lose money similarly because the day trading patterns are similar than the patterns you see on a daily chart. So everything is just really, really quick. It's, it speeds things up. That can be good or that can be bad. The downfall of day trading is, is it, it's maybe too exciting for most people. There's you know flashing lights, quick fills, the adrenaline. Some people just cannot handle it. It basically, day trading magnifies the exposure to destructive temptations and obstacles. People who are day trading are generally over trading. They're generally over leveraging. They are generally losing money. I, I can honestly say as a broker, I get to see different types of strategies and the market approaches and that sort of thing. And day traders really have a hard time because it's hard to manage emotions on such a uh, hypercharged shortened time frame. So aside from the fact that the emotional aspect of it. The other downfall of day trading is stop orders. And that might sound crazy to some people that have, you know, they've read books and they've gone to classes that everybody, and everybody says stop loss orders are necessary for risk management. The problem is um, stop orders more often than not, in my opinion, actually do the opposite of protecting traders. They actually create losses because 
people either put their stop too tight, or if they do have a deep stop, a lot of times the market will run that stop. It'll, it'll elect it and trigger it, stop the trader out, turn around and go the way that the trader wanted the market to go in the first place. So the trader's sitting there with a big loss in his account, watching the market move without him. Um, unfortunately, it's Murphy's Law. It happens more than you could, uh, you could imagine. So on the other hand, if you don't play with the stop, I think it probably uh, more often than not would work out favorably than using a stop. That said, eventually you're gonna find yourself in a situation that you have runaway losses and things get out of control. And that can be extremely difficult to, to recover from. And it can be emotional and can trigger a lot of uh, poor decision making. So what we're gonna propose to you today is the use of long options weekly options specifically, to day trade the evening S&P or some of the other markets. You, uh, weekly options are a newer product, but um, so the liquidity is coming around. The evening S&P liquidity is actually very good on the weekly options. You could also consider doing something like this with crude oil options, 10-year note options, um, maybe euro weekly options. Everything else is probably left better left untouched as far as the weekly options go. The liquidity is improving all the time in these products. So long weekly options basically eliminates or mitigates all of the obstacles that we just talked about for day traders. So to summarize, the two largest ob obstacles for day trading success are premature stopouts and emotion. But the purchase, and in, if you've come to some of our classes before, you might recall that we generally recommend an option sell, selling strategy, collecting premium, premium rather than paying it. Today's class is actually the exact opposite. And it's different because we're using options that are very cheap. They only have a couple of days to expiration. So you're not spending a fortune on an option that will probably expire worthless. And you're not even planning on holding it to expiration. You might only hold it a couple of hours. Believe it or not, the options can move enough in price to be worth your while. So using long options, the cheap ones, not the expensive ones, you don't wanna go drop $1,000 on an option that expires in a day or two, don't do that. Keep it cheap, but they will take a lot of the emotion out of the game and they will absolutely eliminate premature stopouts because if you buy an option, and the market goes against you, you can lose the premium that you've paid, but you're always gonna be in the trade. If the market, the S&P drops 30 handles and then subsequently rallies 40 handles, and in today's environment, that's not that out of the question, you don't have to worry about getting stopped out on the low and watching the market run without you. You're still in the trade. You may have lost some money and then recovered it, but you're always in the game. So another uh, couple of things to keep in mind when, when buying options, it solves a couple other problems with day trading. There's no margin concerns. Sometimes when you're day trading, you get a signal later in the day, but you're, you don't wanna take it because, well, you don't wanna hold your futures overnight. Maybe you don't like the risk of overnight trading, or maybe you really don't have the margin to hold it. A lot of day traders are trading well beyond their means. I'm not saying that's a good idea. It's probably not, but people do it. Um, so, for example, the margin on an E-mini S&P will just say it's roughly 6,000. It's not uncommon for a trader with 3,000 in his account to be day trading the E-mini S&P, sometimes in multiple lots. So somebody like that is basically forced out of their position before the close. No matter what happens, they don't have the margin to hold on to that trade. So they either have to bypass any signals that occur late in the day, or if they're in a trade and they're, it hasn't developed yet, they can't hold on, they have to get out before the close. And you'll notice, if you've watched the S&P in the last hour or two of the day, you get big short squeezes and long squeezes because of that exact thing. A lot of the traders just have no choice. They have to get out by the close. And by the way, the close is actually two o'clock Pacific time or uh, four o'clock central time. That is when the E-mini S&P closes. If you're trading with a discount broker, they might try to tell you that it closes an hour earlier than that because they, they're they trying to take the easy way out. Um, they want all their clients to be within margin by the stock market close, not the futures close. 
Playing with long options will give you lasting power. You're going to be less prone to panic. You don't have to place a stop loss because your risk is limited. You can ride the waves a lot easier. And when I say easier, again, we're going back to the emotional aspect and the fact that you don't have to worry about getting stopped out. You're always in the trade. You can always recover. Doesn't mean it will recover, but at least you have the chance to. You know, Markets are volatile. Once you're stopped out and you're on the sidelines, it's really hard to get back in. And if you do get back in, it's it's emotional and people tend to make bad decisions and it just gets it becomes messy. Options take a lot of that messy decision making out of the way. Also, there's if you're buying options as opposed to buying or selling futures, there's not going to be any forced liquidations on a big uh, spike one way or the other in the S&P because your risk is limited. You can only spend the amount of money you have in your account. So if you're trading a $3,000 account, you could only buy $3,000 worth of options, but you probably don't need to. You could probably buy an option for two, 300 bucks or even less and day trade with limited risk. You don't have to worry about margin. You don't have to worry about your broker jumping in and force liquidating you. And there's gonna be a lot less account volatility. It might not be as exciting. You're not gonna hit the the home runs you might hit with trade, day trading futures, but you'll be thankful when a bad trade comes along that you're not day trading futures. So what we're talking about here are weekly options. And what I mean by that is options that expire on a specific day of the week. Now, prior to weekly options, S&P traders were accustomed to working with options that expired every month. You probably remember the third Friday of each month was option expiration. And on that third Friday of each month, we had a little extra volatility and things moved a little differently because of option traders were squaring things up. And also, time is money. So the options, when we were forced to trade monthly options, generally had a substantial amount of time to expiration and they were expensive. So buying options or sell to day trade really wasn't a great choice other than in the last week of, the, uh, of expiration, so from the second week of the month to the third week of the month, it was possible to buy cheap options and day trade them. But the other three weeks of the month, it really wasn't, really wasn't a, a reality. So now the CME or the Chicago Mercantile Exchange has issued options that expire every Friday. So instead of every third Friday of the month, we have options that expire each and every Friday. And they've actually recently added Monday and Wednesday options. So there are weekly options that expire every Monday, every Wednesday, and every Friday. That's three days of the five trading days we have expiring options. And what that means is you can buy an option that's relatively close to the money, that's relatively cheap that ex because it expires in a day or two. So suddenly day trading options make sense where it didn't before. So a lot of people ask, is there enough liquidity in the weekly options? The answer is yes. If you would have asked me this several months ago, I probably would have said no, but yes, now they are. ES weekly options are quickly gaining in popularity and actually they've become highly highly liquid training instruments. The bid ask spread on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday weekly options is generally between a quarter and 50 cents. So that's $10 to $25. The Monday weekly I'm sorry, the Monday and Wednesday options are a little thinner than the Friday weeklies, but they're all tradable. Daily volume in the Friday weeklies is generally in the thousands of contracts per session. Monday, Wednesday options are generally in the hundreds of contracts. So in normal market conditions, you're not going to have any problem getting in or out. The bid-ask spread's not going to eat you alive like it used to in the past. Things are good. Also, there are market makers in the E-mini S&P weekly options quoting these options under normal conditions around the clock. So roughly 23 hours a day, you can buy or sell these options with reasonable liquidity. That said, during extreme volatility spikes, which we have been seeing lately, market makers generally step back and pull their bids and asks. It causes the spreads to balloon, but this is generally temporary, minutes, not hours. 
And it happens with the monthly options also. It's just the the nature of the game. If you were a market maker and the S&P was jumping 20, 30 handles in a couple of seconds, you probably wouldn't want to have any orders out there either. I mean, the market makers, uh, their, their goal is to provide liquidity to the market and make a little money as they're doing so, but their goal is not to uh, jump in front of a freight train and, and be, you know, make, make poor decisions. So can't blame them. We like to try to call day trading with options a poor man's day trading because it comes with limited risk and low risk. Now you can choose how aggressive you want to get with the, this type of trading by choosing an option that's either close to the money, out of the money, or deep out of the money. You choose how much money you want to spend and how uh, sensitive your position will be to the market. If you're not familiar with the, the term delta, delta is basically the rate of change in an option price relative to the futures price. If you choose an option that has a lower delta, the profit and loss or the volatility of that particular option is going to be a lot slower moving than it would be if you chose an option with a higher delta. The delta of a futures contract is one. If you choose an option that's at the money, it's going to have a delta of about 50%. So and what that means is if the S&P moves 10 points, your option will move about five. If you choose a delta of 25, if the S&P uh, moves 10 points, your option is going to move about two and a half points. So you can see a delta of 25 on an option, you're only going to make or lose roughly, this is kind of a guess, but roughly 100 to 150 bucks as the S&P moves 10 points. But in a small account, that's a lot easier to manage, and it, it's not such a bad, uh, not such a bad gig. Okay, so some of you might be asking, wait a minute, if the S&P moves 10 points and I'm only making 100 to 200 bucks, is, is that even enough to make it worthwhile? I mean, the S&P moves 10 points several times a day in today's market, but a couple of months ago, the S&P hardly moved 10 points uh, in a day. There are some days it, it didn't move more than four or five at a time. So, but the answer is yes, they, uh, the options can move enough, and I'm going to show you some examples of just how much these options can move. Even if you choose an option with a low delta and a low risk, you can see some real movement. Now, again, it's not going to be the same type of exciting movement you might see if you're trading the futures outright, but that's not the point of this. The point of this is to slow things down. The E-mini S&P is not as many as the name implies. I mean, $50 a point in a market that's moving 20, 30 points a day is a lot, especially for if you're a smaller trader and you're just trying to learn. That's really honestly just, it's just too much to handle. So this is a great way to slow things down with lower risk, lower volatility, and it's a great way to keep your head on your on your shoulders. It's a lot easier to make good decisions when you're making or losing a reasonable amount of money and you're not trading beyond your means. Okay, so let's take a look at, this is a screenshot of the S&P uh, a few weeks ago. I don't recall the exact day, but you'll notice the market's at 28.33 and it's up about uh, eight on the day. So this is a, a market that's moved about eight points. But the high and low is actually pretty substantial. We're talking about a roughly 30-point range. So that's, again, I mean, this is abnormally large volatility. When the volatility gets back to something that's a little more uh, historically normal, these options aren't going to move quite this much, but they're also uh, going to be a little less risky. And you'll be able to trade closer to the money options rather than out of the money options and still get the same kind of uh, movement in price. So you'll notice if you go, let's look at the, the high of the day was 28.37. So if we look at the 28.35 strike, we see that it's currently trading around $6. That's roughly $300 in the S&P. 
but it's been as high as eight and as low as 140. So you can see, I mean, obviously it's, it's not realistic to expect that you bought the low of the day and sold the high, but you can see that option made six, you know, seven-ish points or it moved six, seven-ish points, I should say. And if you caught a piece of that, it could add up. So for example, a trader that was lucky enough to buy this option at a buck 50 or two bucks, which is, let's just call it a hundred dollars, could have maybe, if they timed it almost perfectly, could have maybe picked up three, 300 bucks or so. Um, again, this is all just kind of guesstimating, but I mean, you can get an idea of, okay, if your risk is a hundred bucks and you make 300, that's not so bad. And it, you can do the same thing on the calls. The low of the day was 28.09. These options did roughly the same thing. You can see seven, eight, nine point change in these option prices. What I'm pointing out to you is there is plenty of profit potential with limited risk. So if you go in and buy a really cheap option for a couple hundred dollars, it could double, triple, I'm not saying it will, but it could. You could make some money on that with a total risk of two or 300 bucks. So the risk is low and the profit potential is there. Takes Probably takes a little more patient than uh, it, you know, trading the futures outright that is obviously if a future moves 20, 30 handles, you're making a heck of a lot more money than you would if you were trading these options. But at the same time, if you're trading the options, there's less risk, there's less emotion, you're probably making better decisions and you're probably gonna do a lot better in the long run. Oops, I think I might have uh, skipped a slide here. Let me see if I can go back. Sorry about that. Okay, so one thing that turns traders off from trading options like this is that it's not quite as easy. It's not as simple as trading futures. Futures is really simple. If you buy it and it goes up a point, you made $50. Options are not that simple. Option pricing is based on time, volatility, and demand, things that cannot be quantified. Therefore, the profit and loss on options at any time before expiration is a little bit of a guess. It's not simple math, and sometimes you might think that the market gypped you a little bit on, on what the option pricing was, but that's just because maybe there were a lot of people you know, looking to buy options when you were buying, so the price was a little inflated. So again, it, it's, a, it's not nearly as clear cut as trading futures, but let me show you a little trick on how you can kind of estimate what your option might or might not be worth given a particular move. Now this is actually crude oil options. These options have seven days to expiration, but what you can do is estimate what your option would be worth if the futures market moved a specific increment. So for example, the market's trading at around $61 a barrel. Let's say that we, our analysis suggests that we think crude could drop a dollar today to $60 a barrel. So if we went to the 58 put and we bought it for roughly 11 cents or $110, we could say, well, if we're right and the market drops a dollar, this put that we just bought for 11 cents is probably gonna be worth what the 59 put is worth right now. So it might roughly double in value. So again, this is super low risk trading. You, you may not wanna buy the 58 put if you really feel really good about it, you might go ahead and buy a 60 put, knowing that if you buy the 60 put for 450 bucks roughly, and the market drops a dollar, you doubled your money, you probably made about 400. But if you're wrong and crude goes the other way, the most you could ever lose is 400. So that is, the idea of roughly estimating what your option might be worth on a given given move. Unfortunately, it's really, there's nothing, a lot of people want black and white answers, but in option trading, there are no black and white answers. You can calculate profit and loss with an equation and black and white answer if you hold the expiration, but that's really not what this is all about. If you're day trading options, it's not about holding the expiration. It is really just about playing the premium in the middle. So let's look at a couple of quick examples here. I think I have a couple minutes left. So this is an E-mini S&P 
example, these options that we're looking at uh, have about two days to expiration. Now, this is when volatility was relatively high, so these options were really expensive. In a more normal market, you could buy an option. Let's say you think the market's going to go to the bottom of the trading range here. In a normal market, you could probably buy an option with a strike price at the bottom of the trading range for a couple hundred bucks. In today's market, it's not really that easy because the volatility is so high. But it doesn't necessarily have to get to your strike price for you to make money. So a trader could have come in and bought a 2680 put, which is obviously 50 points under the market. That's that would be a big move, but they're only spending $130. Now, remember, you can get more aggressive. You could buy a 2,700 put. You're going to spend more, but it's going to be more sensitive to market movements. So instead of selling a futures contract and placing a stop loss and hoping you don't get stopped out, you could just buy a put. Your risk is $130. Bucks. Worst case scenario is you lose $130. Best case scenario is the market drops and you pick up a few bucks. Okay, so this is uh, basically the same the same trading example. The market's at 27.30. You buy a 26.80 put. You spent roughly $130. You have no risk of premature stop. If the S&P returns to the low of the day, that option gets up to the seven, eight, nine dollar range. So an option that you just paid a couple dollars in premium for might quadruple in value. And again, if the if the market does get back to the low of the day, if you're right and the market sells off sharply, and it doesn't even have to get anywhere near your strike price, all it has to do is go back towards the lower end of the trading range, and you're going to be Fine. You're not going to be rich, but you will pick up a few bucks. And you're not going to lose uh, lose any bathroom breaks or coffee breaks over it. You could probably go on with your daily business and while still doing this kind of stuff. Again, it's poor man's day trading. So just to give you an idea of how slowly or how quickly an option like this might move, and again, you could get a lot more aggressive by getting a closer to the money option. I'm just showing you this particular example if you wanted to take it really easy. But a 2680 has a delta of uh, 14, meaning for every 10 points the S&P moves, this is going to move a little over a point, like a point and a half. So you're not going to get rich on anything like this unless the market unless we get a flash crash, but that's probably not going to happen often. But to give you an idea, the S&P dropped uh, from the last slide um, about three points, I believe, roughly three points, and this option made about 30 bucks. So if you were trading the futures, you would have made 150 bucks. This option made about 30 bucks. Obviously, uh, there's a big difference there, but there's also a big difference in the risk and the stress involved. Okay, so four hours after entry, the S&P is up 14. So remember, we bought a put. We were thinking the market was going down. A futures trader would be losing 700 bucks. This particular option lost $82. Well, that's no fun, but it's also not the end of the world. Someone that's down $82 would probably either add to the trade or they might roll their strike price higher. For example, the 2680 is now deep out of the money and probably not going to do much for you. So you could sell that option and buy something a little closer that you, so you have a little more leverage if the market does come down. Somebody that's trading the futures probably would just be out of luck. Either they were stopped out or they couldn't take the pain anymore or they just simply um, you know, are hanging on to a big loss and they're, and they're not having very much fun. So whereas a futures trader might have abandoned ship, an option trader, like I said, might have adjusted adjusted their strike price higher. They could have taken a loss on the original trade of 80 bucks, no big deal. They could buy the 2,700 put instead. Their total risk at this point is going to be roughly 100, 150 bucks, three, a little over three points in the S&P. And it might have worked out. The S&P is starting to taper off. The trader's making 50 bucks, making some of that loss back. But 
even more so, they're still in the trade. They still have skin in the game. They're not on the sidelines watching the market move without them. And that can be important. This is what that uh, chart might, might, or this is what that chart looked like on that particular day. I highly believe that most traders, most futures traders would have been stopped out here and they probably wouldn't have enjoyed that ride. An option trader could have easily ridden that out. I mean, they were at the worst point, they were losing 80 bucks and they didn't have any more than a couple hundred dollars of risk on the table at any given time. Suddenly those options came back to life. You'll notice that the 2,700 put, which on the last slide was going for about three points or 150 bucks, it's now worth 500. So this trader might have come out ahead two, 300 bucks or so without much risk on the table at all or, or much stress. And again, a futures trader most likely would have been forced out of the position without enjoying the, uh, the benefits of, of the reversal. So these options can move enough to be worth your while, and they can uh, return a profit even though the risk is really low and, and even limited. So just to, to I know I'm kind of running out of time here, but um, just to reiterate, you don't have to have a lot of money or risk on the table. You can do it a slower way. And a lot of discount brokers do not offer these products. So be careful if you if you do want to trade options, make sure you're with a broker that will allow you to do it. You, you do get what you pay for when you choose a brokerage firm. Trust me, I know this firsthand. But in conclusion, trading day trading e-mini S&P options are a great way to avoid the burdens of margin, the burdens of runaway losses, and premature stopouts.